So let's move on to um, example four. All right. So if we look, um, or sorry, example five. If we look at example five, the very first thing we want is to write the problem as numerator over denominator, which is how number five is currently written. The second thing we want to do is write um, each of the terms in descending order, which is how example five is currently written. And then we want to write example five in the factored form. So if you have a negative in the front, you want to factor out the negative one. So that is something that we have to do in example five. So if you look at the bottom, you can see that there is a negative in the front on the bottom. So we're going to factor out a negative one. So I'm not even talking about the top. I'm just talking about the bottom. So if you factor out a negative one on the bottom, what do you have left over? x minus 4. So positive x because we factored out a negative. Positive x and a negative 4. All right. And then what type of factoring is it on the top? Yeah, difference of squares. So we have x squared minus 16. 16 is a perfect square. So on the top, we're going to have two sets of parentheses, one with a plus, one with a minus. And so what are our two parentheses on the top? x plus 4, x minus 4. Okay. So step one, numerator over denominator, descending order, factored form. Now we're going to reduce the factors that are in common. So what factors can we reduce? Yep, x minus 4 and x minus 4 are the same. So x minus 4 divided by x minus 4 reduces to make a 1. And so that leaves us with an x plus 4 divided by a negative 1. So anytime you have just a plain old negative sitting on the bottom, that's actually a negative 1. Now, most people would not leave a 1 on the bottom of a fraction. They would change that and they'd say you don't even have to write it as a fraction to begin with because it's kind of like a whole number. So they'd say if we're going to divide this by negative 1, that can just change the sign of both of the terms that we had. So x plus 4 divided by negative 1 would become, anyone have any ideas? Negative x minus 4. So that's how we would handle that problem. Beautiful. All right, example six. So step one, write it as numerator over denominator. It is already written that way. Step two, write it in descending order. It is not currently in descending order. So how should we fix the numerator? What happens if I try to cancel the x squared? Yeah, it's wrong. You kill a puppy, actually. That's what we're protecting today. We're protecting the puppies. Don't kill any puppies. Uh, puppies are the most common baby animals that get killed. Um, in this topic, but in general, baby, uh, baby puppies are the ones that go. Because if you try to cancel the x squared, you are taking a subtraction problem. See that? This is a subtraction problem. And you are using division to reduce a subtraction problem. You can't do that. So the only way that we can reduce is we can say two factors, things that have multiplied together can reduce with division, right? Because this is times and this is times. So division and multiplication can reduce. But if we have something where it's x squared minus 4x, x squared minus 2x, we cannot reduce that with division. So these are terms. Terms cannot reduce with division. Factors can reduce with division. Terms cannot. 
So trying to reduce terms with division is what kills a puppy. All right, so we have written it as numerator over denominator. We've put it in descending order. Um, at this point, we are moving on to step three, which is to write it in the factored form. How do we factor both of these? This is our normal trinomials, right? Just our regular factoring. So we're looking for what multiplies to negative five but adds to negative four. We're looking for what multiplies to negative 15 but adds to negative two. What are the numbers that do that? Negative five and three. Okay. What about this one? Okay. So we got x minus five, x plus one, x minus five, x plus three. Okay. And now that we've written it in the factored form, what can we do? You can reduce the factors that are identical. So x minus 5 and x minus 5 reduces to give you 1. And then what is your final answer? x plus 1 over x plus 3. Done. All right, now we have to go back because if I remember correctly, we did not do this part in the notes, right? The excluded value. Okay, an excluded value is a value that makes the expression. Hold on, hold on. Undefined. Ooh, that hurt my brain. An excluded value is a value that makes the expression undefined. Uh, rational functions are undefined when the denominator equals zero. And that's because you cannot divide by zero. So if you tried to do five divided by zero, your calculator would be like, oop, can't do that. Actually, let's go ahead and grab a calculator real quick. Let's try it. If you tried typing in five divided by zero, what does your calculator say? Error. Error, divide by zero. Yeah, your calculator doesn't like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and we're gonna figure out what the different um, excluded values for each of these problems were. So for example one, the excluded value here, the value that x cannot be, for example one, is zero. x cannot be zero. If you plug zero in for x, that's going to make you divide by zero when you plug it in. That's going to be an issue, okay? So, and I'm going to show you how that works. If I go to my y equals button and I type in um, alpha y equals number one, and I'm typing this in as a fraction, 18x to the third over 24x squared. 18x to the third over 24x squared, and then I hit second table, you can see that at zero it has an error. It won't let me plug in zero, but I can plug in negative two and get an answer. I can plug in negative one and get an answer. I can plug in one, I can plug in two, I can plug in three, I can plug in four. All of those numbers I can plug in and get an answer. I just cannot get an answer if I plug in zero. All right? And the reason is, if I try to plug 0 in for x, I get 18 times 0 to the third, so I get 0 on top. 
and I get 24 times 0 squared, I get 0 on bottom. And 0 divided by 0 is, if you want a fun answer, ask Siri what 0 divided by 0 is. Imagine that you have 0 cookies, and you split them evenly among 0 friends. How many cookies does each person get? See, it doesn't make sense. And Cookie Monster is sad that there are no cookies. And your friends are sad. Because they don't exist. Oh, wow. This escalated quickly. <laughs> there we go. I know. Wow, Siri. Rude. It's, it's some variation of that, yeah. Yeah. So zero is the excluded value here. You can't plug it in. But if you look at everything else, all the other values work. So the excluded value for number one is zero. For number two, we have two excluded values. For three times x, the excluded value is zero. For x minus two, the excluded value is two. So you just have to think about what the factors are when you look at it in factored form. Not after you've canceled them out, you look at it before you've canceled your factors out. And you think about what would make those factors equal zero. And we can do the same thing here. We can graph it. So I've got 7x times x minus 1. And I've got 3x times x minus 2. And you're going to find the same thing, that zero is going to have no output. And 2 is going to have no output. So I'm going to do second graph. 0 does not have an output. 2 does not have an output. Notice that the factor on the top that equals 0, see how it says x minus 1? If I plug in a positive 1 there, that would make the top equal 0. That does have an output because you can put 0 into the top of a fraction. 0 divided by 5 is what? 0. 0 on the top of a fraction is fine. 0 on the bottom of a fraction is a problem. Okay? 0 on the top of a fraction is fine. 0 on the bottom of a fraction is a problem. Okay? So if you want to know what your excluded values are, you can always see them in the table. They're going to be the ones that give you an error message. Okay, so the excluded values here are 0 from where that GCF was, the x right here, and then positive 2 from that factor right there. Any questions on the excluded values for number 2? 0 and 2. All right, number 3. So if we look at this one, you guys can see I did not do my video notes last night. I know, it's terrible, isn't it? Unheard of. So this one, if I factor it, x plus 5, x plus 8, is that right? So the two excluded values for this problem are going to be negative 8 and negative 5. x cannot equal negative 8. x cannot equal negative 5. So you can see the excluded values just by looking at the factors on the bottom. They are positives in the factors. When you look at the excluded values, they're the opposite sign. So I'm going to go ahead and you can even type it in just like the original problem. You don't even have to type it like a fraction. So I'm going to type it the way the original problem says. So x squared plus 13x plus 40. And I'm going to show you guys that negative 8 and negative 5 are the excluded values. So if I look, there's an error message at negative 5. And then there's the error message at negative 8. And that's because those are the factors. They're the opposite sign of the factors on the bottom. All right, any questions on finding those excluded values? So I don't care about the top. 
Notice that the top, the top equals zero when you have a factor, uh, it was x plus four is the factor. Notice that negative four, that didn't give me an error message, it just gave me zero. That wasn't an issue, no error message there. We can have zero on the top. We just can't have zero on the bottom. All right, so that's where excluded values are. We can't divide by zero. That's where the issues come. Okay, any questions? No? Okay, so what we're gonna do first, um, I have this worksheet just to remind us of factoring because this unit we're gonna factor, I don't know, 20 times per day at least for this unit. If you get through a problem this unit and you haven't factored, you've done the problem wrong. That's how this unit goes. It is a very factoring heavy unit. We might as well call this the factoring unit. That's how much we factor, okay? So we're gonna factor a little bit to start with. Just make sure that we remember how to factor. And then after we're done factoring, we're gonna practice doing this stuff where we um, do some factoring, do some canceling, top and bottom. Sound good? Make sense? Look. Is how I feel right now. Uh, with a with a like, eh, I feel great. I'm sore. Please kill me. Okay. All right. I'm gonna hand these out.